Hi everyone, thanks for coming back for day two of week 10, the last week of these RPS at home videos. I'm really excited that you guys are back as we have a lot to learn about the solar system today. Um, I'm basically gonna kind of break up our instruction into uh, three different sections. We've got um, to learn about the two different types of planets, we have the order of the planets and then the size of our planets. And then I will take us into a awesome online lab that you guys will do through Gizmos. Um, but to begin, I want to uh, start today's lesson by giving you guys a really cool video to watch. I usually show this video to my students every year. It's really fun. It's a song and it's a great way to kind of introduce the planets to you. They're going to give you lots of little fun facts about the planet, so pay close attention to what each planet is saying about itself, and let's get started. All right, so here's our video. We can see the whole solar system from here. I think we can hear it from here, Joe. We are the planets of the solar system. Different sizes for every part. The music never ends. We are such good friends that we are orbit the sun. We go the sun, rapping first on this track. From the beginning, I'm the center of the solar system. Planets be spinning around me. So hot, I'm roasting your seat. Now I pass the mic to the planet closest to me. Mercury, the smallest planet, small as Earth's moon. I get super hot and cold, and it's been very Oh, Venus, I got mountains and volcanoes and spray. I'm the same size as Earth, but in the opposite way. Yeah, I'm Earth, I'm the home to every boy and girl. Such beautiful, beautiful world. I'm Mars, a red planet. I got deserts and ice, and I've got two moons. That's like one moon twice. I'm triple the biggest planet. I'm humongous, gargantuan. when I spin the fastest, wrap the fastest, plus I'm handsome, glam sun. Oh, please, I'm Saturn. Check out my beautiful rings, made up of billions of rocks, dust, and other things. I'm Uranus. I say that with pride. Okay, I lie. I'm embarrassed because I'm the only planet lying on its side. I'm Neptune. I'm cold, dark, windy, and mysterious. I'm very stormy, so bring an umbrella. I'm serious. We are the planets of the solar system. Different sizes for every one. The music never ends. We are such good friends that we all orbit the sun. Well, we are done exploring the solar system. I am thirsty. Let's explore the rest of the Milky Way galaxy. All right, so as you can see, every single planet in our solar system is very different. They all have different qualities, but you're going to learn today that a lot of them have some similarities as well. So let's take a closer look. We're going to start today by only looking at the four inner planets. So if we're looking at the sun, they're the four planets closest to the sun. We're going to start today's lesson by watching a quick video all about these inner planets, which um, you'll hear them being called the rocky planets. We're going to talk about a different name that they go by. Um, and then we're going to learn exactly what all these planets have in common. sightseeing using our telescope. We're going to tour our solar system. The solar system is made up of the sun, the earth, and seven other planets, plus lots of dust, big rocks, gas, and other stuff. All of that stuff together is in orbit around the sun, traveling around it over and over, and the solar system is huge. It's so huge that only one spacecraft so far has ever flown from the earth all the way to the edge of the solar system. It's called Voyager 1. It's a probe about the size of a small car, but doesn't have any people in it. It has flown from Earth through the solar system, taking pictures of lots of the planets as it went, and it took over 35 years to reach the edge. It's so big that today we're just going to cover half of it. And keep in mind, it took Voyager 1 all that time to fly from Earth. 
and Earth isn't even at the middle of our solar system. The sun is. So let's start there, right at the center of the action. The sun is a star, and like most stars, it's a huge ball of super hot gas that gives off light and heat. Without the sun, Earth would be a dark, frozen world with no life. But Earth isn't the closest planet to the sun, that would be Mercury. Not only is Mercury the closest planet to the sun, it's also the smallest. It's less than half the size of the Earth. Mercury doesn't have a lot of gases around it like Earth does. Without these gases to hold in heat, Mercury has the biggest changes in temperature of any of the planets. It can go from a super chilly 170 degrees below zero at night to a very warm 425 degrees Celsius during the day. People couldn't survive on Mercury, and I don't think robotic rats could either. And things get even more extreme on Venus, the next closest planet to the sun. Venus is the brightest planet in our solar system. If you know where to look, you can sometimes spot it from Earth, especially just after the sun sets at night, or just before when it rises in the morning. We've sent probes to Venus to take pictures too. They show us that the planet is rocky and covered with thick clouds, but doesn't have any life on it because Venus is extremely hot. In fact, even though it's not the closest to the sun, Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system, with temperatures reaching as high as 460 degrees Celsius. Whew, let's cool off and head to the next planet. Hey, this place looks familiar. Welcome back to Earth. Earth is about 93 million miles from the sun, and it takes 365 days, our year, for the Earth to orbit the sun. And Earth is unlike any other planet in our solar system for at least two reasons. Number one, it's the only planet that we know for sure has liquid water on its surface. And number two, it's the only planet that we know has life on it. No other planets in the solar system have plants or animals or any living things on them. Earth, you rock. Now let's move on to our last stop for today. It's time for a mission to Mars. Mars's nickname is the Red Planet. That's because Mars has a lot of minerals on its surface that give it a unique reddish color. Mars is sort of similar to the planet that we live on. The length of a day on Mars is almost the same as a day on Earth. It's just about 40 minutes longer. And Mars even has some ice on it, frozen at its North Pole. But as far as we know, there's no liquid water anywhere on Mars because it's so cold. Mars also has mountains and canyons like Earth. In fact, it's home to the solar system's biggest volcano. Scientists have named it Olympus Mons, and it's nearly three times larger than Mount Everest, the tallest mountain on Earth. Clearly, the solar system is an amazing place, full of different worlds with all kinds of extreme environments. And we've only covered four planets so far. And those four planets all have one thing in common. They're all solid worlds with hard, rocky surfaces that, if you ever went there, you could stand on. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are what we call rocky planets. But next time, we're going to tour planets with no surface at all. The gas giant. All right, so as you could see from that, um, she discussed a lot about how the surface of those planets are all rocky and hard. So let's review exactly what that means. We're gonna go take a look now at the PowerPoint that I have created for you guys, and it's actually in your lesson plan. So you'll be able to see a copy of this um, PowerPoint, and you'll be able to look at it up close and do some activities with it later. So. She called these planets rocky planets, but there's actually like a little bit more of an official scientific term that we call these, and that's terrestrial planets. So you may hear rocky planets, but really like if you want to be an expert scientist, you would refer to them as terrestrial planets. And there's four of them, and that's Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. And what's really great is they're the first four planets in our solar system. So they're all grouped together. And exactly what does that mean to be a terrestrial planet? Well, it means that the surface of that planet is made up of rock and sometimes metal. And I don't want you to think made of metal the way a car is made of metal, the outside of it being a big sheet of metal. What really that means is just like on Earth, if we were to dig into the ground, we'd find bits and pieces of metal like copper, iron, things like that. Well, some other planets, if we were able to dig into their dirt or their rocks, we would find bits of metal too. And really Mars right here, this last planet, is the best example of that. You heard her say that Mars is known as the red planet. Well, it looks so red in color because there's lots of iron in its sand. And over time, that iron got rusty and it turned a reddish color. So another thing she talked about is how all um, 
how Earth is very special in um, all of these terrestrial planets. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Earth is the only one that has that liquid water. In this picture, you can see the frozen ice on the North Pole of Mars here. And we do have ice on Earth too, but as you can see, all those beautiful blue oceans from this view, Earth has a lot of liquid water. Now, um, Mercury, the first planet, definitely does not have life or liquid water because it actually has no atmosphere. And that means it doesn't have that kind of outer layer of gas that Earth has. And because of that, you can see lots of marks. There's lots of circles, which are craters and um, places that other asteroids and meteors have hit Mercury. And that's because that gas layer, its atmosphere, really actually helps protect planets. And since Mercury doesn't have that, it's really rocky. It's really barren. It doesn't have a lot of things on there. And unfortunately, its surface kind of looks beat up. Now, Venus is a little bit different. Venus does have an atmosphere, but it's a very toxic one. We would not survive if we sent astronauts to Venus. Um, but a lot of times, Venus is known as Earth's sister or Earth's twin, which is kind of an odd thing because it's the opposite of Earth. It's definitely very deadly. We, we don't have any water there. We couldn't survive. And yet, Earth is the perfect place for life. So why do we call it Earth's sister or Earth's twin? Well, it's just because they're almost exactly the same shape in size. Earth is just a tiny bit bigger. So that's why we call them sisters or twins. And I'm sure just like you, you may have a sibling who's very much the opposite of your behaviors or your personality. That's kind of what Earth and Venus are like. So these are our terrestrial planets. And the most important thing to remember is that they are made of rock and metal. So now let's move on to looking at our gas giants. Welcome back. If you were with us last time, then you got to join Squeaks and me on the first half of our tour of our amazing solar system. The solar system is the sun and all of the things that orbit around it. The biggest of these are our eight planets. Last time, we started with a star at the middle of our solar system, the sun. And we stopped by for visits to Mercury, the smallest planet, followed by Venus, which is the hottest planet. Then our home, Earth, the only planet that we know that has living things on it. And finally, Mars. Those four planets are the only rocky planets in our solar system. That means that they have hard, rocky surfaces, and if you could fly there, you could actually stand on them. But way out beyond Mars, you'll find a totally different kind of planet, ones that are made almost completely out of gas. Scientists call these the gas giants. And the first one we'll bump into is also by far the biggest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. This planet is made up entirely of thick layers of gas, and it's so big that Earth could fit into it more than 1,300 times over. It even has more than 60 moons of its own. Jupiter is also a very stormy planet with wild winds whipping all over all the time. One storm called the Great Red Spot has been raging on Jupiter for hundreds of years. The storm sometimes gets smaller or bigger, but it has been there for as long as people have been studying Jupiter with telescopes. See you later, storm. Our next planet, Saturn, is also really, really big and made of gas. But you can tell it apart from Jupiter and other gas giants because of its big, beautiful rings. Actually, all four of the gas giants have rings around them, but most of them are so small and faint that it's hard to see them. But Saturn has the biggest and the brightest rings, and they might look fancy, but they're really just made of dust, rocks, and ice. And even though Saturn is really big, it's also very light. Some scientists think that because the gases that make it up are so lightweight, the whole planet would actually be able to float in water. If only we could find a bathtub big enough. Saturn is the furthest planet from the Earth that you can actually see with your own eyes. You'll need a telescope to spot our next gas giant, Uranus. Unlike all the other planets in our solar system, Uranus spins on its side. Nobody's exactly sure why, but it could be that a large object smashed into the planet a long time ago and knocked it sideways. Besides moving differently, Uranus is also a lot colder than the other planets and is sometimes called an ice giant. It has reached the coldest temperature ever measured in our solar system, dipping almost as low as 223 degrees below zero. Oh, brr. But it's not getting much warmer where we're headed. Come on, Squeaks, let's find our last gas giant, Neptune. 
Neptune is the furthest planet from the sun. It could take up to 12 years to fly to Neptune from Earth. And Neptune takes a really long time to orbit the sun, over 160 Earth years to go around a single time. But it has at least one thing in common with its big brother Jupiter. It also has giant storms swirling on it. Scientists called one of these storms the Great Dark Spot because it looked like a big blotch of dark blue. And this storm was fierce. Scientists think that the winds inside the storm were the strongest, fastest winds anywhere in our solar system. But this storm didn't last as long as the one on Jupiter. The last time astronomers pointed their telescopes at the Great Dark Spot to take a picture of it, it had disappeared. But a new storm has formed on another part of the planet. Whew, that was an awesome trip. Now we've seen all of the planets in our solar system. But what else is out there? Plenty. Those rocky planets and gas giants are just a few of the things in our massive solar system. It also... All right, so we're going to stop there and go back to our PowerPoint and take a look at our gas giants now. So the gas giants are some of my favorite planets because they're huge and they look cool and they're super interesting. So the four gas giants are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And just like our terrestrial planets that were all grouped together at the beginning of our solar system, our gas giants are all grouped together at the end of our solar system. And kind of to think about exactly what makes a gas giant, well, let's think of that word, gas giant. So they are gigantic planets. They are so much bigger than the terrestrial planets and they are made up of large amounts of gas. And one of the most interesting things that was uh, mentioned in this video is that yes, Saturn is the planet that is known to have those big beautiful rings that we can see, but actually all four of these planets have rings. They're just so tiny and so thin and small that we can't really see them unless we had a super, super powerful telescope. So another great thing um, about these planets is that like Jupiter has this giant raging storm that's been going on for thousands of years. We've got another one that has since disappeared on Neptune. But if you look closely at these planets, you'll see that it's not just those areas that have those swirling gases. When you look closely at these planets, you can see that the entire surface of the planet is made up of those swirling gases. And definitely go back to the video if you want from day one, because you can get a really up close look at what those gases look like. Okay? So let's kind of review what we've learned. We've learned that we have terrestrial planets and we have gas giants. There are four planets of each. Now the thing that kept coming up in that video was the sun, right? She talked about the sun being close to the terrestrial planets and she talked about the sun again when we, just, when we watched the video on gas giants. So why is the sun not included in this? Well, the sun is actually not a planet. The sun is a hot ball of burning gas that is actually considered a star at the center of our solar system. So what makes all of these things a planet is that they are circling or orbiting around the sun. So our four terrestrial planets are closer to the sun. They're the first four, that's Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. And then our gas giants come Later on, they're further away from the sun, and they are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. All right, so now we're going to move on to kind of the second topic that we need to discuss, and that is the order of our planets. And it's important to know that these planets aren't around our solar system. They actually are in a very specific order. So I want you to imagine, just for a second, that if we had a special spaceship that could fly and stand directly on the sun. Now we know that couldn't happen, the sun is way too hot, we'd probably burn up right away, but let's just pretend for a second we did. If we started to fly away from the sun, we would cross paths with certain planets in a certain order. So the first planet we would come across right here is Mercury. So Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. After Mercury, we'd see Venus. Venus is the second planet. If we continued on our journey farther away from the sun, right? We're going farther and farther away. We'd hit Earth, 
Earth is the third planet. And Earth is in that perfect distance where it's not too close, so we don't get too hot here on Earth. And it's also not too far away where it's way too cold. So Earth is that perfect distance away from the sun that a lot of scientists actually call the Goldilocks spot. So it's not too close, it's not too far, it's just right. So if we continued to fly past Earth, we would come across Mars, the last of our terrestrial planets. And then we would actually not immediately get to another planet. Actually, what kind of separates our terrestrial planets from our gas giants is this thing called an asteroid belt, which is a collection of rocks and dust and ice that have kind of gotten trapped in that layer between Mars and Jupiter. So we would actually have to be very careful and fly through that asteroid belt. Then we would hit our next planet and the first of our gas giants, which is Jupiter. If we continue to go on, we'd hit Saturn then Uranus, then Neptune. Now I'm sure you can see all the way out here we have Pluto, and unfortunately we do not consider Pluto a planet anymore, and there's two reasons for that. One, the first reason, which is the main reason, is that it's, it's small. It's way too small, so we consider it a dwarf planet. It's actually smaller than Mercury, and it's smaller than our moon. So that's how tiny Pluto is. But there's actually a second reason that sometimes we don't talk about in school, but I'm going to tell you anyways, because I think it's really important. Technically, Pluto is not a planet because it doesn't follow the rules. So think about it this way. To be a planet, it, you have to orbit or circle around the sun. Well, every now and then, Pluto here decides it's going to cut in front of Neptune and it's going to change its orbit so it's not going and it's not following that same circle that all the other planets do. So think about it this way. If you're playing a sport and you decide to break the rules, you usually have to sit out so you don't get to play the sport anymore. Well, Pluto decided to break the rules and Pluto doesn't fit the same circle orbit that all the other planets do so it can't really be a planet anymore. And that's really another really important reason, not just that it's too small, it's really that it doesn't always follow the rules. So that's why we don't consider Pluto a planet. Now, in order to know the exact order of our planets, which Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, there's a really easy way to remember that. And it's always a silly saying that I teach my students every year. And if you look over here at kind of my rainbow color coded letter or words, you'll see that the silly saying goes like this. My very educated mother just served us nachos. Sometimes I've heard people say nuggets. I've heard some other things, but I say nachos. All right, so the reason this helps us remember is we've got MY for Mercury, right? MY, very for Venus, V for Venus, educated, E for Earth, mother, M for Mars, J just for Jupiter, served, S for Saturn, us, U for Uranus, and then N, nachos, N for Neptune. So if you remember that silly saying, my very educated mother just served us nachos, you'll remember the correct order of the planets every time. All right, the next and final order, or I guess um, groupings that we need to understand as um, scientists is we need to know what the size of each planet is. So we're gonna discuss which planets are the largest and then which ones are the smallest so we know which ones go in between. Um, as you can see from this picture, I found this picture, I think it's really great because it shows you exactly how big our gas giants are and how small our terrestrial planets are. So as you can see, Jupiter is our largest planet. It is the largest even out of all the gas giants. It is so big. And when you look at like Earth, look, I mean, look how tiny Earth is compared to Jupiter. I mean, even look at, look at Mercury, right? It's so tiny. And then we've got Saturn right and we can see its beautiful rings and we've got uranus and neptune which just kind of like earth and venus are sister planets uranus and neptune sometimes they're called brother planets because they look um very similar in size but uranus is just a tiny bit bigger than neptune so again there's a silly way to remember the order of these planets so 
from largest, it goes Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Earth, Venus, Mars, Mercury. Now, the first thing I always tell my students, what's nice is that our gas giants here are already in the same order as they were from the sun. First, it was Jupiter, then Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. And from largest to smallest, it goes Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. So that's kind of easy to remember. But then we've got our terrestrial planets where it kind of goes all out of order. Earth is the biggest terrestrial planet, then Venus, then Mars, then Mercury. So again, let's use a silly saying to help us remember this. And this time, I'm going to have to ask you guys. We're going to have to keep a secret because I purposely misspelled some words. So don't tell any of the reading teachers this, okay? Don't tell your language arts teachers. We got to keep it a secret that I did that. I misspelled some words, but it's going to help you remember the planets, okay? So here's our silly saying. Just serve your, spelled you are, nephew, either vegetables or marshmallows. And mellows is spelled incorrectly. It's really M-A-L-L-O-W-S instead of M-E. But there's a reason I did that, okay? Just for Jupiter, served Saturn, your Uranus. So see how I misspelled your, so it's spelled with a U. Nephew, Neptune, either Earth, vegetables, Venus, or, and here's the one that kids get mixed up because it's Mars and Mercury right next to each other. So they get M and M mixed up all the time. So if you remember marshmallows, we've got the word Mars first. So Mars is bigger. And then mellows, Mercury, M-E for mellows, M-E for Mercury. So again, the silly saying is just serve your nephew either vegetables or marshmallows. And that'll help you remember the planets from largest to smallest. All right, so at this point, um, when you get to this section of the PowerPoint, I'm gonna show you exactly, this is an area where you can interact with the PowerPoint. You're gonna be able to do different activities. So this is where you're going to check to see what have you learned, how have I been doing? So the directions here say, correctly name each planet in our solar system. And now I'm realizing mm, the directions don't tell me, am I supposed to order it from largest to smallest? Am I supposed to order it from the sun? So which one is it gonna be? Well, as a scientist, we need to make some observations and try to figure out exactly what order you're supposed to do here. And the biggest thing I notice is the sun is right here. So if I see the sun, then must be asking us to order from the sun, okay? So you're gonna go in here and you're gonna click on each gray box and you can actually type in the name of the planet, okay? And then from there, there's only one more test to your knowledge and this is a cool little click and drag activity. So you're gonna click and drag Earth first. Is Earth a terrestrial or is it a gas giant? You're gonna move them around, okay? And then you're gonna leave it wherever you think it is and you can go on to the next one. And the next one and keep going okay so take a look at this take your time right make sure go back you have so many I have the videos here for you to rewatch right there's our terrestrial planets video here's some information about them we got our gas giant video more notes here's our, our an anchor chart for you another one another one so don't be afraid to go back and make sure you know exactly what you're you're doing, okay? Go check your work. All right, so once you get there, the last thing to do is our Gizmos Lab. So let's just go right ahead and take a look at what that is. So our Gizmo Labs, again, is going to be all about the solar system. So we're gonna go to Gizmos and type in solar system. And if you notice, there's two here. There's solar system explorer and solar system. We are just regular old solar system. So that second one. Now, if you want to go and check out any of those other ones, especially like comparing Earth and Venus, looking at the different orbital motions, things like that, go for it. They're really cool gizmos, but we today in this lesson are just using solar system. Okay, so from here, you're going to have to launch your gizmo. Ooh, for some reason, 
I'm gonna have to stop sharing for a second. For some reason, my gizmo logged me out. Let me re-log in for you guys so you can see this awesome activity that we're gonna do. There we go. All right, there we go. Okay, so when you first open, this is what your gizmo is going to look like, okay? And this is like, this tab right here, Orbit, is really cool. It's definitely worth looking at, but you don't, this is not the actual section of the gizmo that we're gonna do, okay? You can, I, I think it's a really cool activity. You can look at it, it can show you how the different planets orbit around the sun, you can click on different planets and, and see their actual orbit, you can change the speed, you can zoom out to see our gas giants, see how far away they are, right? So all of this is awesome, but um, actually for our lab today, we are going to start by hitting this button where it says size, okay? So once you're there, your screen should look like this, and it's, um, let's take a look at what our actual activities are saying. So you're gonna open up your Gizmos lab sheet. And our actual question for today is, what are some interesting features of each planet in our solar system? So number one, it says observe. So we're gonna use our observation skills where we really have to look at that picture and write down what we see. It says look closely at the diagram of planets. Based on the diagram, list the planets from smallest to largest. So going back here, you're going to look at this picture and tell me which one is the smallest and then the last one should be the largest, which is the opposite of what I had in our lesson, okay? So don't just start typing in the silly saying and being like, oh, I know largest to smallest. Be careful because this is asking smallest to largest, okay? Now remember, you can click on each planet and it'll tell you how to correctly spell each planet's name. All right, number two says compare. How do the four rocky planets compare to the four gas giants? So you do have to think back to our lesson here and look at our gas giants and our terrestrial planets. You gotta know which ones are which. And then you're gonna compare them. So what do they have in common? Or what do they have not in common, right? Contrast them as well. What, what similarities do they have? What differences do they have? Number three says analyze. Most planets are surrounded by, a, by layers of gas called atmosphere. And remember, we explored atmosphere a little bit during our rocky planets or terrestrial planets um, slide. It says, click on each planet and read about it. Focus on the information about each planet's atmosphere. So what they're asking you to do is click on a planet and then read this little tiny box down here, okay? and it's gonna give you information about the atmosphere. So look for keywords like atmosphere, gases. Um, maybe you might see things like hydrogen, uh, nitrogen, oxygen, things like that, okay? And you're going to answer all these questions about atmosphere on different planets, okay? Then number four says analyze. How is the size of the planet related to the thickness of the atmosphere? So that's where you do have to go back and you have to pay close attention to what you were reading. So which of these planets, when you clicked on it, talked about a thick atmosphere? And then finally, number five, I really like this one um, because you're not gonna find the answer in your gizmo. This is the one where your answer is not on your gizmo. It says extend your thinking. So that's that last part of what our day two is about, is really extending and exploring this topic and then thinking about it on our own. It says, which planet do you think would be the easiest for humans to colonize someday? Explain, so you have to tell me why you think that. So think about what that word colonize means. When Europeans wanted to explore different parts of the world, they came to North America and they colonized North America. That means, right, when we learn about Jamestown and when we learn about all the different explorers, right? So that means they were not from North America. They came from another country and they started a settlement or a civilization there. So in this case, we're not traveling from Europe to North America or Europe to Africa, Europe to Asia. Instead, 
we are traveling from Earth to another planet. And we are going to try to create a settlement or a home on another planet. So you have to read about each one and tell me exactly which one you think would be the best. Okay? So I'm really excited for you guys to um, really explore this new topic. I'm really excited for you guys to learn a lot about our planets. I can't wait to see what you guys do and what you guys come up with. And I wish I could be saying, you know, I'll see you guys next time. But instead, I'm going to tell you guys, I hope you have a wonderful and safe summer. And keep reading, keep learning, keep um, going out there and researching things. If you have a question, right, get online and try to figure out the answer yourself. I hope you guys have a wonderful summer and I'll see you next year.